Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee, your weekend edition. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the collective for the weekend of Friday, May 24th through Sunday, May 26th. Now, this is a general energy reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please go ahead and email me. My email is in the description box below, along with the readings that I offer. Yes. Also keep in mind that time is an illusion. Energies are fluid. So this message can resonate for anybody at any time. These videos, all of these readings, regardless for when they're dated for, regardless for when they are released, they are timeless. Yes. Um, also, this is a collective message. So like I said, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, 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 I think that's it. So there was another round of upsetting dreams last night for me. And I know that there are others of you out there that have been experiencing this as well. So that's why I'm sharing it because I feel like we're going through a massive collective purge. So I just want to talk about this for a few, for a few minutes. Um, and I guess, I don't know why I'm being guided to say this, but if somebody wants to timestamp because they don't want to hear this part of the situation, go right ahead. Anyway, um, so the first so two nights ago, I had a really, really bad dream that was just like really messed up. Um, and then last night I had another dream that was pretty messed up, although it was a much more personal scale. Now, the theme of the dreams is the same. The first dream was I was being, per, like, in a sense, persecuted, like not not in the sense that, um, ooh my music box not in the sense that you know it was like some sort of medieval thing and whatnot but i was being persecuted by all of these people um and no one really it, it was by a lot of people like it was all of the people around me it was just the general public it was no one specific that i knew it was just like there was this general consensus that um you know, people had, I guess, it seems like agreed upon that they were going to just treat me like shit. Um, and it's, I don't even know what the reasoning for it was. But in that dream, I had just kind of, I was just going along with it because there was literally nothing I could do. And I remember at one point I was screaming at the top of my lungs to get people to hear me, to get people to listen to me. And they just refused. It, it just, they just did not care. They, I guess they had made up their mind or they had, they were seeing it in a certain way. And in, a, in essence, I was the bad guy. And it, it was fucked up. Like it was really fucked up. Um, like that's, if you guys remember from yesterday, like when I woke up that day, like I had serious trouble getting out of bed cause I was, cause I was still kind of in that energy and I, you could absolutely say that I was feeling defeated. Um, and just at one point, I'm just going to say it just because it conveys what I was feeling in the dream. But at one point in the dream, I was just saying to them, cause it's almost, a, they had me kind of like chained up. And I don't know if that was symbolic of, you know, the, 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 the um, societal consensus they had come to or the group. I, I hope you guys are get, understanding what I'm trying to say. But um, I mean, I do remember physically being chained. But again, I don't remember if that was symbolic. I, I can't tell if that was symbolic or not. I mean, obviously it was symbolic. It was a dream. But I, you get what I'm saying. But at one point... I was just like, I was just saying, go ahead and just fucking kill me. Like, just kill me. Just put it, just put me out of my misery. Just end all of this. Like, I don't, like, I don't want to have, like, just do it. And they almost did, but for some reason they didn't. And now, like, I, I, I didn't really want them to kill me, but I was just like, whatever. I was so, I was feeling so defeated in that moment that I was just like, whatever, just do it. But they didn't. Um, but then, okay, so last night... I had another dream that was very similar, only this time it was much more personal. It was a friend of mine, an old, very dear friend of mine that I have not spoken to in years. And actually, it's funny, it's very interesting because I think I've, I remember thinking about her either yesterday or maybe the day before or something like that. And just remembering, it was it actually, 
it was a few days ago that I was thinking about her and I was remembering that the last time we spoke, you know, things didn't end well um, for personal reasons. But, and I remember feeling guilty about that, like I had done something wrong. And um, then I remembered like a few, a couple of days later, I remembered that actually, wait a second, I didn't do anything. Well, actually, no, 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 that's not true. But I remember thinking about her a few days ago and remembering and thinking to myself, oh God, I, you know, I wish I hadn't done that when we had last spoken. That wasn't, that really wasn't nice. She probably kind of hates me now. So then I have this dream last night in which she was involved and apparently I had done something to really upset her and it was to the point where like we were on some trip and we were supposed to share a bed and she was so upset with me that she like she took over the bed and made this like <laughs> mock bed on the floor or something like that and I was going along with it until the very end of the dream where I started to realize wait a second I I didn't do anything and I remember saying to my, like, say, because I guess I had shown her some video and she got really offended by it. And then by the time at the end of the dream, I was like, wait a second, I was at a dance class. And, and I remember saying to her, the very last thing I said in the dream was, I was at a dance class and I just wanted to share it with you because you're my friend. And I turned away and I, and I, that's when I left the dream and I woke up like in a mid sob, like I wasn't crying, like my eyes weren't tearing, but I was like, you know, that, that, so <laughs> that kind of like sobby thing that I woke up mid sob. And I wanted to share that with you because somebody yesterday did say that they woke up crying after their dream the day before. So, I'm sharing all this because they're similar, okay? First of all, they're both, both of those dreams are situations in which I was being persecuted wrongly, okay? The second dream is even more significant because then I was thinking about it, I mean, not just because it was on a personal level, but I was thinking about it when I woke up this morning and I was like, wait a second, the last time I spoke to her, she actually said some shit that was really disrespectful and that was kind of like the last straw for me. And I, and before I ended the conversation, she was like, she was like all cute. She's like, I love you. And I was like, yeah, bye, Chris, bye. <laughs> I don't want to share her name. Not that it wasn't like, not that it was, that, not that you guys are going to know who it is, but I'm just trying to protect her privacy. But for sake of privacy, let's say her name is, I don't know, Debbie. And I was like, yeah, bye, Debbie. And that was it. And I'd never spoken to her again. I tried to. But it didn't, like, we, she never answered or whatnot, it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But so both of those dreams, there was this unjust persecution. So I'm sharing that because I'm wondering if any of you guys, whatever those dreams were for you. But on the first one, it was on a collective scale and that didn't really work. On the second time, it was a much more personal scale and it, and it kind of worked until I had recognized what was actually happening. And that's when I pulled away and was like, uh-uh, that's not going down. So share your dreams in the comments below. <laughs> but anyway, um, I have a feeling we may be talking about something like this um, in for the reading. Um, there's definitely an energy of needing to stand up for yourself, needing to believe in who you are and not allowing others to shame you just because they share a different opinion. Ooh, that's big in the collective right now, isn't it? Okay, well, without further ado, because we're almost 10 minutes in, let's, let's just get to the reading here and see what spirit has for us for today. Again, this is whatever spirit wants to discuss for the day, but y'all know by now. Okay. <laughs> Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of Friday, May 24th through Sunday, May 26th. Thank you so much, Spirit. It is Memorial Day weekend, y'all. 
is the unofficial start to summer. We are almost in June. What the hell is happening? Where is the time going? <laughs> we name this three shuffles. Best messages, please, Spirit, for our weekend. Friday, May 24th through Sunday, May 26th. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's see what we've got for today. Mmm, look at that. That's Seven of Swords. King of Wands. It's a big old stack. Okay. Overall energy is the magician. Very interesting. Okay. We have this stack here. Huh. All right. Ooh. Okay. Aw. What is this about? All right. So the first thing that came out was the Seven of Swords here, okay? Um, and then we have the King of Pentacles with the King of Wands. Yes. Then we have the Lovers, Strength, Five of Swords, the Universe, and the Star. So if we want to say, okay, because I'm I'm picking up. This is really about the, dr the 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 dreams that we've been having. Now I'm not to say that you know we're all having similar dreams, or maybe we are. I don't know. Um, I do know that a lot of us have been having some rough dreams lately. Um. And I guess that's similar enough, really. It's the collective energy, but it's all going to be expressed differently in, in uh, within the individuals. So, okay, that makes sense. There is a sense of dominance or control here and manipulation between the King of Pentacles, the King of Wands, and the Magician. And it's deceptive. Now, what I'm getting here but with because then you have the lover's strength five of swords the universe and the star the universe is a unique card in this deck this is the moon child tarot um it's not available on amazon but you can google it they have their own separate website they also have a star child tarot which i'm very interested in i might end up getting that one at some point but um what i'm seeing here in opposition to this manipulation, Seven of Swords, uh, King of Pentacles, King of Wands, you have this energy, which is the healing energy, which is the lesson that you're learning from whatever this situation is. This is on a collective scale, okay? Um, it could have to do with your dreams. Not all of you are dreaming about it. Some of you actually are experiencing this in your day-to-day -day life. Um, I, it, I mean, this can be expressed in many ways, but the, the thing here is the choice, okay? The choice with the lovers. And the lovers also represent a divine union. So the choice here, and then with strength, okay, but, but give me a second. The choice here is, like I usually say with the lovers, it's a choice of vice or virtue. Vice being the opinions, wants, desires, and needs of others over the opinions, wants, desires, and needs of your own self. It's not to say that you're not going to be there for people or that you shouldn't be there for people, but you need to be there for yourself. You need to take care of yourself first before you can really effectively be there for anybody else. And choosing vice over virtue is constantly putting people, other people external to you before yourself. Here, the choice is to stand up, choose yourself, and Protect yourself, defend yourself, honor yourself, right? In the face of opposition, five of swords. But see here, 
That is the lesson. The universe talks about completion. I actually, it talks about lessons learned, yes. Wisdom gained, but I also, I do wanna look into the book for this, I, just to get the, at least the key words. Because I don't wanna misinterpret this, this card either. Where you at? There you are. Yeah. Keywords are completion, ascension, clarity, success, and arrival. The universe represents the peak of a soulful journey when the stepping stones of your path join in brilliant completion. After all you've gleaned and built along the way, you can now look back at all of your, on all of your accomplishments and take the time to celebrate and rejoice. This is the ultimate success and spiritual fulfillment that nourishes your heart beyond mere physical needs and limitations. This goes much deeper. You have become wiser, softer, and more weakened, which delivers a newfound awareness of what you would like ultimately to do next. You have worked through the trials and tribulations and have grown in resilience and strength becoming a powerful co-creator of your own story. This dynamic energy replenishes your confidence and illuminates the future with shimmering possibilities. There is much to look forward to. And then of course, quite fittingly, that's followed by the star, which is the healing energy, which is also some sort of wish fulfillment. I'm hearing specifically a dream come true for some of you in face of this opposition here with the five of swords now the other thing that i'm getting with the seven of swords king of pentacles king of wands and even actually the magician now initially that was saying to me it was giving off a bit of a patriarchal energy okay um it was between the king of pentacles and the king of wands materialism um finance business uh, being grounded, the physical world, but then also with the King of Wands, narcissism, gaslighting, um, uh, egotism, um, uh, uh, false prophets, people that um, I'm trying to choose my words um, carefully here. People that put on a certain air try to get you to believe that they're something when they're not, try to get you to follow them. In, in extreme cases, this would be cult leaders that end up like murdering the whole, the whole cult, you know, in some sort of ritual that is supposed to lead them to ascension, but really this person was just being selfish and egotistical. You know what I mean? I'm sure you guys have heard about, now that's an extreme case, but of course that's what spirit was, how spirit was showing me to describe it to you guys. But now I, I think you get what I'm saying now. That's one way of seeing this King, Seven of Swords, King of Pentacles, King of Wands and Magician energy. The other way of seeing it is you actually growing into a stable, secure, financially grounded, um, well-manifested individual who is very self-confident, very sure of themselves, know what they want, know how to get it, or at least know that they can achieve it, but also knowing when the right time to strike is. Of course, this is from a masculine point of view because it's the kings, it's the kings of pentacles and, magi and, and, and wands, and also the magician, which is a masculine individual. But this is significant because the masculine energy is about taking action. Okay, um, <clears throat> whereas the feminine energy is the receptive magnetic one. So now it's almost as if you've grown into this state of being throughout all of this deception, lies, cheating, backstabbing, whatnot, whatever, the self-defeating or just comp uh, extremely nasty and competitive energies with this Five of Swords also. You've grown into someone that's willing to take action, someone that's willing to stand up, that's willing to defend yourself. Or, and, and, it does, and you could be, this could be expressed through activism, yes, but this also could be expressed just through you standing firm in who you know you are and who you know you've become and not allowing anyone to sway you because you're like a rock, king of pentacles. King of Wands, okay? 
and thus you've made or you are in the process or you are being presented with an opportunity to make a decision to to make a decision with the lovers to come into greater union with yourself yes to integrate more of your masculine energy should you be a more of a feminine individual um, to do some healing of your masculine energies to untwist your <laughs> masculine energies for any of us whether you're masculine or feminine and to tame the beast here or to integrate or assimilate the beast as I like to say because this it's really not about taming the beast the beast is not trying to cause trouble it's just that when we dishonor it or we don't honor it or we don't acknowledge it or we push it away or we abuse it that it starts to run cra go crazy i mean yes there is there is a wildness to it there is a virility to it but it's not trying to destroy things it just wants to be balanced just like everything else so it's really not in my opinion it's not about taming the beast it's about assimilating the beast very much like the ego it's not about killing the ego it's about balancing the ego with the rest of the the the, the person the being and understanding what role the ego is actually meant to play instead of letting it run amok, right? So you're making a choice, you're assimilating or integrating the inner beast, just like you would the inner child or the ego. You're facing the destruction, the competitiveness, the backstabbing, the cheating, the lose-lose situations, and completing those cycles. No longer allowing yourself to be deceived, no longer allowing yourself to be taken advantage of, knowing exactly who you are and standing firm in that, in the face of deception. And thus, with that, brings healing and wished fulfillment. But this is deep healing, this is soul healing, this is spiritual healing. Wow. That's really great, you guys. Look at y'all, look at y'all doing the damn thing <laughs> okay so now let's get some clarity some clarification mm -mm -mm. all right i don't know if you all noticed but my allergies are much better today thank you very much <laughs> Oh boy. All right. Two more shuffles here, and then I'm just going to get some clarity. Just some clarification. We're going to start with this top. This top. Uh, this top row here. Seven of Swords, King of Pentacles, King of Wands. We'll also include the Magician in that as well. Why not? Let's see what we've got here. Just some clarity, please, spirit. Ah, the hermit. Judgment, also excellent. That's quite excellent, actually. Uh-oh. Is that the high priestess? Mm-hmm. Okay, underneath the deck is the five of wands. Sure is the High Priestess. Wow. That's really quite amazing. And then we also have... And the Ten of Swords is, has flew out. It's in reverse, though. Um, that is a good thing, you guys. Because what this is saying, what this Ten of Swords is saying here is not only that has the situation come to completion, but it's being released like or it's been released and that's what i'm saying that's that's kind of what i'm picking up here it's not that yeah because normally we would say and now this this obviously can change reading to reading in any moment like the ten of swords in reverse in some cases could be resistance or blockages towards completing out a cycle but not in this case in this case this is the cycle has been, has come to completion and now it's like actively being released or it has been released that's what i'm seeing here 
um, especially in conjunction with the rest of these cards. You have the Hermit, Ascension with Judgment, and the High Priestess. The Hermit is speaking to um, following your inner light, choosing to see yourself as you truly are, especially with, wow, whoa, the, all three of these cards, the Hermit, Judgment, and the High Priestess, choosing to see yourself as you truly are rather than how society teaches you to look at yourself. Whoa, <laughs> that is intense. Um, yeah, the hermit is following your inner light, inner guidance. Some of you actually may be going inward, going and doing some sort of soul searching, maybe some shadow work, which is allowing you to release this Ten of Swords or release this, these situations that have come to completion. You are ascending. You are, because um, I do see a judgment as a, like a, a card of ascension, um, awakening to the crimes, the trials and tribulations that are going on around you, um, second chances, resurrection, kind of like a phoenix energy. And then also the high priestess is in a sense kind of mirroring the universe card that's down here um, because the high priestess is the keeper of all the secrets, okay? And it's as if you are, I'm hearing indoctrination, but this would be into, um, into universal wisdom instead of some sort of physical 3D wisdom, yes? Indoctrination in the sense that you have surmounted the obstacles, you've passed your test, and now you gain the wisdom of the self. And you are free from the chains represented here by this Ten of Swords, or the trials, the tribulations, the pain, all that stuff. Now with the Five of Wands underneath the deck, this is talking to the, cre the, 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 um, the chaos that comes with creating something, with change. There's differing of opinion, um, and a lot of this has to do with the people around you. Okay, but also, you might be at odds with yourself, differing of opinion, um, not quite sure. You might also still be dealing with some of the energies um, left over from this dominance that was put upon you. Mm. Okay, so now let's get into... This bottom row here, the Lovers, Strength, Five of Swords, Universe, and the Star. Just some clarity, please, Spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's that Seven of Swords again. Overall energy. But then you have here the Hanged Man. The Nine of Wands, the Nine of Wands, excuse me, and the Five of Pentacles. There has been a massive change in perception. A change in... There's, yeah, there's definitely enlightenment happening here for this part of the collective. Okay. Um, the Hanged Man is the change in perspective, is the enlightenment, is... is and what I'm getting here is that... Even though some of these situations that you may have been dealing with were really, really rough, very destructive, very painful, very hurtful, it still is something you chose to do for a greater purpose. And that greater purpose could just be to get the wisdom that would come from it, the experience, the hanged man, putting yourself in a precarious position or feeling like you're stuck or stagnant in order to gain the wisdom that comes with experiencing that type of situation. Keep in mind, guys, that there is no such thing as right or wrong. It's just perception and experience, okay? Take that as you will. But your perseverance here is paying off because what you're, what you're closing out is a cycle of rejection and deception. Seven of Swords with the Five of Pentacles. You're closing that out. You're learning the value of who you are. You're... And, Okay, for some of you, this situation has been about um, uh, 
knowing your own worth and being able to say to people, look, I know who I am and I know what I stand for and I know that I am not what you are making me out to be. King of Wands, King of Pentacles. But it took some time. It took backstabbing, it took cheating, it took feeling rejected. It took having to defend yourself in order to dealing with this dealing with the deception it took all of that in order to finally get to this place and there's no reason to feel upset about that because that's the whole reason why we're here to begin with to experience these sort of things learn grow and expand That's beautiful, you guys. Aww, I love it. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna get the closing message and we're gonna go with the Lightworker Oracle today. Yes, in diddly, in diddly do. <laughs> All right, closing message for the collective here. Closing message, please, Spirit. In terms of uh, this reading, here we go, guys. Best message, please, Spirit, for our weekend edition. Ooh, two of them. Okay. All right, so we've got two messages here. Card number 42, fifth ray of intellectual knowledge. Oh my God. Oh, wow. This is this actually really couldn't be any more perfect. I just realized that, but we'll see in a second. And then card number 20, life path. Let's start with card number 20. There we go. Do you wonder about your divine life path and purpose? Have you been enrolled in spiritual, oh, I'm sorry. You have been enrolled in spiritual training. This training might be obvious in the form of a course you are undertaking or hidden in a life lesson that is currently triggering your healing, learning, or growth. Whether it is obvious or not, successfully completing this training will empower you to fulfill your divine purpose this lifetime. Further clarity will be revealed to you. The universe promises that you shall know what you need at the perfect time in a way that you cannot miss. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit more of this. You are in spiritual training for a divine mission that serves your soul development and spiritual growth whilst simultaneously helping others. It will help you express your spiritual purpose this lifetime. At times, your training may be aligned with study or applying your skills in ways that seem more obviously aligned with a spiritual path. At other times, your spiritual training may be disguised in ordinary life circumstances. If you are unsure of what you are meant to be learning, of exactly how you are in spiritual training at the moment, look to the situations in your life that are causing you the most struggle. This is where you will find your training taking place. This struggle is the place where holding on is, complete, is competing with letting go. It is, however, nothing to be ashamed of. A, quote, growth edge, where you are doing the inner work of growing into more peace, trust, and love is a sign that you are certainly growing. It isn't comfortable. Sometimes it might cause fatigue and even a feeling of defeat. Yet you shall not give up. You shall continue. And in time, you shall triumph with a feeling of peace, resolution, and wisdom. Think about it, guys. The two dreams that I had, the first dream that I had, I was being ac accosted and persecuted by everybody around me by mass like a ton of people right and i was just feeling completely defeated the second dream i had i was being persecuted by someone that i considered to be a very dear friend at one point in my life and again i allowed myself to just go along with it until i realized what was happening and i said no wait a second that doesn't fly 
I'm not going to allow you to treat me like that. Boop. <laughs> okay. I think that's enough from that one. Okay, yes. Next. We're going to go to card 42. Four, fifth ray of intellectual knowledge. Where are we? Here we are. Okie dokie. The fifth ray of intellectual knowledge has come to you as a spiritual gift. You are being given the ability to find information you need, understand systems that impact your life, and find clarity in any issue that has seemed unclear or overwhelming. You shall sort the truth from the lies and learn what you need to know. The Archangel Raphael now assists you in integrating the blessings of the fifth ray. I'm going to read, continue reading a little more. You are distilling a new truth. It might be the truth of discernment where you realize the appearance of a person, group, or cause is misleadingly different to the inner reality. Discernment is incredibly important on the spiritual path, all the more so as you open up to work with energies, with teachers and teachings, and to sort out all issues in your life according to your spiritual principles. Discernment is not judgment, but it does allow you to make informed decisions based on frequency. I want you guys to look at this card, um, I, but I'll explain in a second, but just keep looking at this card. When you choose to associate with people who are on a higher frequency, everyone benefits. If you choose to associate with people on a lower frequency than your own, you may feel your life moving more slowly, becoming harder than it needs to be. Discernment helps you navigate through illusions and find the real gems. It helps you step back from those who say they want to support you, but who actually just want to take and not give in return. The fifth ray helps you choose wisely and sever unhealthy connections. This ray also comes to you when there is more to something than meets the eye. The reason I'm wanting you guys to like really look at this card is because this is kind of describing what I've been going through or at least the dreams that I was having that I, they were expressing their way through me with also this message. This person is illuminated and all the people around her are not. And it would look like they may try to tear her down, especially that one guy that's standing right next to her that's giving her, giving her the side eye over his shoulder. You know what I mean? Like being accosted. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I think you guys get the message. But there you have it, guys. Completion is at hand. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Have a great, I hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend or just a Memorial Day because it's Memorial Day weekend. Um, I love you guys so much and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah, take care. Bye.